Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's that time of year again where the weather is starting to change so I'm switching over my wardrobe to suit the new season. Now this time I'm going to be doing things slightly differently because it's been a couple of years since we did this IKEA hack in this room. So I wanted to touch up the paint in here just to freshen it up. I'll leave a link below in the description box to the video which shows where we hacked all these various IKEA pieces to create this walk-in wardrobe. And as you will see, everything was painted so that it all matched the colour of the walls. And I often get asked how well this paint has held up over time and with daily use, and my answer to that is, it has held up amazingly. It's kitchen cupboard paint, so it's made to be durable and made for everyday use. So as long as you leave it to properly cure for the specified length of time, it really will last. Now I haven't had many chips or scuffs in here, so it's not necessarily that I wanted to cover those. I just wanted to touch up in order to brighten the room again, as paint can start to look a little dull after a while. And as I mentioned in my spring home refresh video a couple of weeks ago, dust can also make paint look a little bit off colored and even dirty. As I emptied each section within my wardrobe, I moved it into the guest room next door, keeping everything in designated piles and groups so that the various categories stayed together for the later stage of reorganizing. Once my wardrobe was empty, I set to touching up the paint on the various IKEA sections. I didn't paint the entire thing, but I did focus on the parts which are always visible, like doors, drawer fronts, shelves, and the front half of the sides of the main carcass of the wardrobe. I used a small roller to achieve that smooth finish and it's also much easier to blend into existing paint when using a roller. Once I was done with the cupboard paint, I then moved on to the wall paint, which is a different paint formula but still in the exact same colour. And I touched up the walls and ceiling before leaving everything to dry and air out for a good couple of days. Once the paint was dry, I then started doing my switch. So in previous years, I've done two switches a year, spring, summer to autumn, winter, and then autumn, winter back to spring, summer, which is around this time of year. I've hinted to this over past switches, but this year I am going to be doing a switch for every season. At this time of year in particular, it's not quite warm enough to be wearing my linen trousers and summer dresses, and there's some days where I still need a coat. So this time I'm catering my wardrobe for the unpredictable season of spring. From the coats I pulled out before painting, I've selected a few to keep out. Spring appropriate trench coats, but also a couple of warmer options for those days which are still a bit cooler. However, heavier winter coats, like my puffer coats, are being packed away along with the majority of my wool coats. So they stayed in the guest room until a bit later on in the process. I then moved on to my knitwear. Now, I have a pretty extensive knitwear collection, as many of you will have seen in previous videos, and so I had to edit that down to a selection that I wanted to keep out for spring. Stripes are always a go-to of mine for this season, so I kept out a lot of striped pieces, along with some neutral cashmere and a black and navy in there for some darker options, which I would still wear during the spring season. I noticed a few pieces needed a bit of knitwear maintenance, so I had my cashmere comb to hand to give them a freshen up and remove those bubbles. I store my jumpers in drawers and always have them folded vertically, so it makes life easier when looking inside and seeing what I have. I organise everything in light to dark colour order, so once folded, I started placing my knits into the drawers. I have one drawer dedicated to stripes, one for cashmere and then one for cotton knitwear. After playing around with them, I realized that I could fit my knitwear in one column running the width of the drawer rather than two columns running from front to back. So I just changed those over. Now onto my denim, which had previously been in my largest drawer underneath my main hanging section in the middle of the wardrobe. Whilst I liked having it in a drawer, I did fancy a change and decided to move it to the shelves on the left where I usually have a shoe edit. 
I wanted to reduce my shoe collection so that all of my seasonal shoes could fit into my shoe cupboard, which you'll see later on. So this meant that the shelving was free to use for something else. I folded each pair of jeans that I was keeping out and grouped them by fit, bearing in mind that I still had some more to get out of my spring summer storage tubs later on. Now, as folded denim looks very similar, I wanted to add some labels so that I can identify which shelves are for which styles of denim. Using my label maker, I printed out some labels, which I did need to cut down, and in hindsight should have probably printed a couple of styles per label so that I had less waste, but hey ho. Then I stuck these labels onto these white card strips, which then slide into the end of these Perspex shelf markers. I used one shelf marker per style, and now I can see exactly which styles are on each shelf, especially given that I haven't had them laid out like this before, so it might take me a while to get used to what is where. Now onto basics. I used to have these in the small drawers under the smaller hanging section on the left. However, I've got so many empty drawers in my two chests along the right wall that I thought I'd create one spring basics drawer. I folded any vests, t-shirts, and even added my merino wool in there too so that I have all basic bases covered for the varying weather that we tend to get through spring. And again, everything is folded vertically, in categories, and from light to dark colour order. Over in my accessories section, I used one pull-out tray for my baseball caps, and then my usual pull-out tray, which is home to my sunglasses collection. Back in my main section, and in the largest drawer I assigned to my athleisure wear, so I folded everything into categories like sweatshirts, hoodies, quarter zips and then my sweatpants and again folded everything vertically and organized from light to dark in each column. Now that I've figured out where most of my categories are going to be living for the season ahead, it's time to start getting out all of my seasonal storage tabs. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I'm not doing my usual full switch over, so not everything is going to come out. However, summer accessories like basket bags are always something that I use throughout spring, so I am getting out all of those and putting them to one side for now before I start reorganizing my bag cupboards. Then going through each of my spring summer tubs, I just assessed what was in each one and pulled out the things which I think that I may get wear out of over the next couple of months. For example, I have a couple of linen blazers which I decided to pull out and add to my blazer section. I found my summer footwear tub, which is pretty much full of Birkenstocks, and I decided not to get out any of my sandals just yet until we get some much warmer weather. I have a couple of pairs of sandals which are new purchases, which you may have seen in my recent What's New in My Wardrobe video. So I added those to this tub so that all my sandals are together in one place, and it's easy to just whip out this tub at a later date. Now I need to start organising the winter items to go away into storage. Removing hangers from my winter coats and then popping those into their garment bags for protection before stacking them into some empty storage tubs. I also filled tubs with the excess winter knitwear that I wasn't keeping out for spring and also put away any of my winter footwear like my cold weather boots. I keep a lot of my footwear in their original boxes, especially if it's a luxury brand, like these Le Grez boots, and then other footwear I tend to pop in a storage tub with other similar related items. Doing this switch often creates quite a bit of dust, so I'm just giving the floor a vacuum before I'm rolling my rug, and then vacuuming that as well. Now, at this point, I have lots of storage tubs full of things to go away, so I'm putting those back into my storage area in order of when I'll need them next. So the first box to go right at the back, because I won't need it for some time, is my festive tub, which is full of anything Christmas related. Following that are all of my winter tubs, which won't be needed until around November time. And then the closest boxes, so the last ones to go in, are my summer tubs. These are now easy for me to access when I want to whip them out in maybe two to three months when I do a switch to summer. So just outside my wardrobe is my shoe cupboard. I reduced my footwear in here a few weeks ago so that I had space to then pop any footwear like loafers, which had come from my shoe shelves. 
I did get out my occasion wear sandals because I'll be doing a video on occasion wear and wedding guest dressing in the next couple of weeks. So they went into one of my spare stackable shoe boxes. And I'll link these stackable shoe boxes down below in the description box as usual because they are a great storage idea. Finally, moving on to my cupboards, which run along the left side of the room. So these were always full of bags, but since my Disney trips have started back up again, my Disney collection has slowly crept its way into some of my bag storage. I have bought some extra storage and will be doing another Ikea hack for this collection to move into. But for now, all of the cupboards need to be emptied so that I can plan out where my bags are going to go. Once the cupboards are empty, I always give them a quick clean before starting to put items back inside. My leather bags go in first, smaller ones in the cupboard on the left and larger ones in the central cupboard. And then all of my woven and canvas spring summer bags fill up the rest of the space on the other shelves. I mentioned additional storage and another Ikea hack, but unfortunately I didn't have enough time to fit that finished project into this video. So I'll be doing a separate video dedicated to making a fully rotating central wardrobe island, which as you can see here is going to be home to my Disney parks collection and also just provide me with a higher surface to fold items on because the footstool that I had in here previously was a bit too low and I, honestly never used it for sitting on. So this was just something more functional that I felt I needed instead. Now we recently bought an air purifier to help with the accumulation of renovation dust from the last couple of years. So I'm popping that on to run a cycle, which in a room this size doesn't take long at all. And there we go, my seasonal switch to spring is done. Now, this time round, I enjoyed not doing a full switch because it can often be quite overwhelming having so many high summer items out and not actually being able to wear them for a couple of months. So whilst I have made technically more work for myself because now I have to do another small switch in a couple of months, I think this is actually better for me. Now I just have the items that I can and will wear through the current season, which makes the decision process when choosing an outfit much easier. Thank you as always for watching. Stay tuned for my additional IKEA hack project and I will see you next time.